So hi everyone and welcome to this video on the quantile regression inside of R. So the focus of this video today will be about running the quantile regression and comparing it with a simple ordinary least squares. So as you may know from theory, ordinary least squares is essentially getting the conditional mean and that may be deficient uh, in many ways. For one, it is not as robust to outlying observations. So outlying observations can heavily penalize or skew an OLS estimate, whether uh, to uh, some particular direction. And as we discussed, one way for us to get uh, over that is to be able is to use quantile regression, is right? to be able to use the median regression and the different quantas inside uh, of the distribution of the dependent variable. So we don't have to constrain ourselves with just using the conditional mean, but rather we can look at everything that's uh, under that ambit. So we're gonna run through how we're gonna run it inside of R. So the first thing we'll need to do is we need to install the package before use. So the package that you, we use for uh, the quanta regression is called Quantreg. So I have it installed already on my computer, so I'll skip this step. Then after which you're going to call the package for use. So we're going to use three packages in this video. That would be the Quantreg package, which you likely just installed, the OLSRR package, and the Tidyverse package. So just run that, and you should be able to. Now, inside of the Quantreg package, there is already a data set, uh, which is on angle, uh, entitled angle, rather. And that angle data set, if we view angles, that angle data set, uh, it contains two variables, which are income and food expenditure. And we're gonna see, you know, it's uh, how that relationship differs as we move from model to model. So we're gonna see how OLS performs as well as how a quanta regression would perform. So first things first, let's show a scatter plot of the whole thing. So let's do a scatter plot between income and food expenditure. So obviously you would expect this to be a positive relationship, right? Because when income increases, food expenditure generally goes up, right? Because you can afford more food, so you can uh, increase expenditure that way. So line 18, this is ggplot. So all I'm telling R is to plot, uh, to do a scatter plot. Uh, the data that I set I'm using is called angle because that's the name of the data set. And the x-axis is income, the y-axis is food expenditure, and this jom underscore point here just specifies that I want to do a scatter plot. Right? So if I run that command, that will produce this scatter plot around here. Right? So that produces this scatter plot, right? And uh, we see that positive relationship. However, might I note that inside of this uh, sort of scatter plot, you do see a couple of anomalies. The first one, the second one, and the third one. These three things are generally what you would regard as outliers. And what we notice is that with these outliers, right, it could heavily sway an OLS result in some direction. And we're gonna show that a bit with this uh, sort of illustration. So let's run an OLS model. So if we run this command, this just does the OLS. So OLS underscore regress is a command that does the OLS regression. And you want to do an OLS regression between food expenditure, which is your dependent. So the first variable you input is a dependent variable. And your independent is income. And all of that will come from the data set angle. So if you run that, you see that there is indeed a positive relationship between uh, income and food expenditure of 0. 0.485. So maybe you interpret this like if your, food, if your income increases by a dollar, roughly, uh, your income, uh, the contribution of income to food expenditure will be an additional uh, $0.485 spent on food, right? So that would be the case. But as we said, because of these outlying observations, right, the OLS uh, estimate might be pulled up or down in some particular direction. So uh, because we would want to avoid that problem, one solution is to use the median regression. And in particular, the median regression, or what we refer to as your least absolute deviations, is essentially the quantile regression at the 50th percentile, right? So at the median. So the command to do a quantile regression is RQ, right? And then uh, quite a similar specification to OLS underscore regress. So your dependent variable comes first, that's food expenditure, regressed against income. And then you specify the quantile. So for example, here, tau 
uh, is an option that asks you, okay, what quantile do you want to use for the median quantile? That's the 50th. So this should be 0.5 and you're getting it from angle, right? So if you run that, that saves it in this object called LAD, right? And if we summarize LAD, we get this. So if you notice, the coefficient of income is higher than before. So in OLS, it was 0 0.485. In the median regression, it was 0 0.56018, likely because it's being pulled, uh, likely because the OLS one is being pulled by one of those three outliers that we have identified in the data set. So let's try to look at uh, the extremes, right? A quantile regression is not just about the median, it's about other points in there as well. So if we try this uh, quantile, so for example, the first quantile, which is 0 0.01, we can get, uh, this coefficient, which is 0 0.28. So notice it's a much lower coefficient than the median as well as the OLS. But if we go for the larger, uh, the largest uh, quantile, which is 0 0.99 or the 99th percentile or quantile, we can get a much higher coefficient, which is 0 0.70. So you can see that the coefficient on income changes as you go from quantile to quantile. And note, a quantile represents food expenditure. Right, so the higher the food expenditure generally is, so the higher the food expenditure in terms of um, uh, its own distribution, then the variation in these coefficients uh, would also happen. So at least in this case, it seems as though um, the higher the food expenditure, the higher that quantile, the higher the coefficient on income ends up appearing. Right, so let's, uh, and I, I think the best way to see how these things differ from OLS is to just plot them. So we're gonna use the plot command instead of ggplot, we're just gonna use a regular plot command. And we're gonna plot the relationship between food expenditure and income. And that comes from this data set called angle. And uh, this will basically be a scatter plot. Right? So this will draw a scatter plot, right? So that's that same scatter plot. And we can see these three points. Now, line 41, right? By the way, the codes will be in the linked in the description box below. So line 41 basically draws in this graph that we have here, the regression line from the ordinary least squares. And we're going to color it red, right? Why? Because it's an AB line using an LM command. So that's, that's your linear model command or basically OLS, right? So if we do that, it's going to draw a dashed red line. So this is the line of OLS. And as you can see, I could likely, if I were to just by visual inspection, I would think that that particular uh, line should be more skewed a little bit here because it shouldn't be minding this point that much as well as this point. It should be focusing more on this, uh, the, the more generic upward trend here. So, and you can see that sort of um, uh, implication I was talking about that uh, sort of uh, that sort of slope of the line being changed you know, not being influenced so much by these outliers in this blue line that we're going to draw, which is basically your um, least absolute deviations or the median regression. Note that this is an RQ command, so it runs a quanta regression. And if you don't specify a tau, right? So say, for example, look at line 42, it has no tau option. That basically goes default to the least absolute deviations or 0 0.5 being equal to tau. Right. So this will do the uh, least absolute deviations regression or the 50th percentile or quantile. And you can see basically what I was saying. Uh, it shouldn't, this red line shouldn't be influenced so much by these three points here. That blue line isn't that much. So it's a much more, I'd say, um, wholesome or holistic estimate of this particular scatter flow. But again, the quantile regression is not just about the median. It's about uh, other percentiles and other quantiles as well. So in, let's try and draw the 10th um, the percentile or the 10th quantile in green and the 90th in orange. So the green one would be here. So see that this is the 10th uh, quantile. Then the 90th should be, I guess, somewhere here, if I'm not mistaken. So it should be there. Yeah. And that's your orange one. And uh, line 45 basically adds a legend. So our red line is the OLS line. The, our, our LAD is the blue line. The green is the 10th quantile. The uh, orange is the 90th quantile. So that's what we have there. But I think the best way to go about it, as I said, is the coefficient on income, which is what we discussed, varies across different quantiles. So maybe 
or a nice graph to know is how different is the estimate of that from OLS? Is it statistically different from OLS? And is it statistically significant in the first place? So let's, uh, we can do that using uh, line 49 to uh, line 51. So let me explain line 49 first. Line 49 basically runs that same quanta regression, but it runs it for every uh, point, right, uh, in increments of 0.5. So starting with the fifth quantile all the way to the 95th quantile, uh, we're going to try and estimate each uh, coefficient on income and basically each intercept coefficient as well. And we're going to do it in increments of 0.5. So basically, we're going to get an estimate for 0.5. 0 0.10, 0 0.15, 0 0.20, until 0.95 in increments of five. And again, this comes from the data set angle. So if you run that, run line 49, uh, and basically that will create an object. Then we run line 50 to line 51. If we plot line 51, we should get this. So let me just explain this quickly. If you recall the coefficient on OLS, if you just run that is gonna, uh, sorry, that's not the coefficient on OLS, it's gonna be this one. Uh, it's going to be this one, right? So that's 0 0.48. 0 0.48 is this line here, right? You see that that's uh, that straight red line. That's not dash. That's your OLS estimate. And basically, the uh, two dashed red lines above it are the confidence band for that particular estimate. And what we want to know is, okay, for which quantiles uh, are the estimates of the income coefficient statistically different from OLS. So you can see that for quantiles here and above, they are significantly different from OLS, right? So from maybe quantile, I'd say 50 or the median through to the last quantile, it's statistically different from OLS, while the quantiles from like the 20th quantile until the 40th are not so different from OLS. And lower quanta are statistically different from OLS. So that's a brief introduction to quanta regression inside of R. I, I hope you understood that it's quite straightforward because basically it looks exactly like an OLS command with an option of tau and just changing from LM to RQ. So thank you for your attention in this particular video, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.